this time it took. And I'm definitely a reluctant runner. Uh, I like the uh, feeling of achievement I get from running. One of my favorite things in the world is having had run. <laughs> but the second benefit is if I see an attractive female runner on a day that I've gone for a run, I think, hey, you know, we have something in common. <laughs> <laughs> Director, playwright, and educator Patrick Lillis is the founder and director of the Farm Theater, a New York-based incubator of sorts for up-and-coming playwrights. The Farm, as in the Farm Team for the Majors. Patrick joins me now. Patrick, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> in that clip we showed a, m a few moments ago, that was you performing. So I should also add to your resume <laughs> that you're also an, an actor. True. Um, I did that. That's a, I performed like twice in 25 years. <laughs> uh, I like so to say, unusual for you. I do it once whenever I have to. But yeah, that was a piece that was inspired. It, it's a piece on suicide. It was inspired by uh, when I was a guest artist at a university, a student had committed uh -huh. suicide. And I wanted to create a piece that would talk about the topic. Um, and, Which can be very healing. Even, yeah, you know. A, I'm surprised. I, I, I was honest with it, and I was proud of the writing, and I thought, oh, this is good. And then I was terrified about presenting it, because I thought, do I want to be that honest? Yes. And, uh, but it was really impactful, and now I'm still doing it. I got invited to perform it for high school kids, and oh. I was disappointed and excited at how they responded to it. I, what was the disappointed part? <laughs> that they were all related to the topic. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, uh, but it was great, and it was actually for an arts organization since it, what was great is they brought me in because they wanted to talk about how to take their challenges in life and turn them into wow. something productive. So there you really, yeah. what a service. And that's called Hope You Get to 11 and what? Or what are we going to do about Sally? Okay, Hope You Get to 11 <laughs> or what? And you wrote? I wrote it. Wrote it. Or wrote what are we going to do yeah. about Sally? Interesting title. I definitely will look into it. But let me get to the farm. Talk to me about this. What This is an organization that you started, right? You founded. I did. I started about three years ago. And it's the farm, as you said, named after the farm system of baseball. Yes. And my idea, I, I have taught for over a decade or longer. Uh, Playwriting NYU's Department of Dramatic Writing, and I also helped found and design the education program for Labyrinth Theater Company. And what I found is that the artists that continued to succeed, that succeeded, were those that had mentors, those that had a sense of community, and you really couldn't. It's hard to just go out and do it on your own. So I wanted to create that. I wanted to create community for early career artists. I wanted to create a place where they could also have people with more experience come and just demystify the profession. You know, and talk about the process. Have we're doing a thing? It's baseball, so we have a thing called the bullpen <laughs> session, where I have uh, two playwrights are going to come: Stephen Adley Gierges and Chisa Hutchinson, who are both great playwrights, and they're going to talk about the value of community for them as writers. And then, to a, it's free into a community of writers or young. And I have a person in my organization who's over 60 who appreciates that I say early career. You can <laughs> early career, yes. You can define that, that any way you yes, want. Yes, I, li I like that very much. And so, uh, so, so here you are, a playwright. You're an artist. Yeah. Why is it so important to you to create an environment where you can cultivate other, other artists? Uh, that's a good question. My thought is why <laughs> it's important is because, I, you know, what I feel like I don't know why I feel this responsibility. I want to say, like, I feel... I always want to help people, and I think if I really just answered, I'm like, oh, I'd like to help. I'd like somebody to help me. <laughs> and I thought, yeah. and it was just the thing about the Labyrinth program that I wanted to, that I started was all these artists would show up generously for free and give themselves, and it costs nothing to give your talent. And then I watched how invaluable it was for other people to feel like empowered that they could do it. And that feeling is what it was for me more than anything. And also knowing that it's, it's needed. I think there's a, a thing about it. It's lonely being an artist, you know. And so it's it, because it's a solitary practice. Yeah. It's you and your... And what you makes know. you unique, you know. That's yeah. the thing. It's, and, and you can't... There's no formula for that. There's, there's, there's a process for writing and a structure and all that. But there's no what makes you individual. And I just want people to feel encouraged and recognized for their individual talents. And I felt, I think it's the lone, I think the part about realizing how hard it is to remain in the game and knowing that, yeah, it's a great question because I'm thinking that's it. I want people to be able to stay in the game long enough to be recognized and not run out of steam. 
and also know that it's not easy. You know, there's, you can see on television or something all these young stars, but it takes a long time. You know, those are, that's like one, less than 1% 1 of people who succeed. It takes a long time to succeed. It takes a long time to find traction. It takes a long time to find your voice. And um, I just think, think it's important to encourage people. And the baseball metaphor, because I love baseball. Yes, apparently. <laughs> is, um, it's like, the, it is the, what you said in the intro, the farm system. It's the idea that somebody who's been at the game before recognizes you have talent, but you still have to develop. Right. And my goal was, how can I create an opportunity for you to continue to play, build the skills, learn from people who've been there before, and find an opportunity for you to be good enough to step into the big leagues? Because it's, it's also not easy. You know. When you say it's not easy, do you think that the biggest challenge has to do with cultivating your own talent or being heard? Once you have a piece that you want to have heard, what, <laughs> when, you, when you think of what's not easy, what part comes to mind? First thing is cultivating your talent. Like that's, you have to, yeah, you have to get to good. First. And then after that, having it be recognized. Because there's a lot of competition. And how do you, if you're, one of the things about the farm that's important to me as a farm system is to be, is that it's for people who don't necessarily come from a pedigree of success. You know, like if, these programs are great, but if you came out of NYU grad or Yale grad school or Juilliard, you're, you already have a platform to be right. seen. So now I want to create another environment where somebody, take my baseball metaphor, who's a, <laughs> who's a walk on, right. can get recognized. Because that is, it's, that's the challenge is for, the, not only the artistic director and the literary manager, if you're a writer, to hear you, but the agent and just people to know, like, oh, that person's valuable. So that's the hardest part. It seems like a very um, valuable gift to bring to people. When you started as a writer yourself, what was, what was one of your first successes? I, I wrote a play called Two Thirds Home, which, uh, baseball? <laughs> no. It sounds baseball? like it's, okay. got a, it's, got, it's got a little baseball reference in it, but it yeah. sounds like it. No, well, about a family drama, traditional yeah. American okay. sort of semi-autobiographical play. And the great thing about that is I was part of a company that went on a retreat. So when I talk about needing a community, I was yes. fortunate enough to have that. So my first play got read and then got developed by this company. And then that company didn't produce it, but another company that knew of that company did. Uh, I was also going to say the great thing about writing that play is it was my first play. I didn't know anybody would ever see it, so I was also very courageous in the writing because I thought, oh, nobody will ever hear this. I can write anything I want. Um, <laughs> they so did hear it. They huh? did hear it. I've so. always wondered about that. Second you know, play was really hard. <laughs> yeah, you were more self-conscious, you mean? Yeah, then I was like, oh. What that's... happened with the first, well. It got, I was saying it got produced. No, I mean, with that success, first question, do you remember what that felt like? Yes, Tell me. I thought my career, I thought it was the peak of why, I, I'm prim I was primarily a director before then, oh. and then I wrote this play, and I thought, oh, I don't have to do theater anymore, because that's why I got into the theater, is to get that story out. It mm -hmm. felt so cathartic, it felt like, and I didn't know that what was happening as I was discovering, I was also a writer, <laughs> and I was discovering that I had a voice, and I had things to talk about, and things to share, but it just felt cleansing, and... Uh, beautiful and overwhelming, and then and then the thing about the second play that I joke about is then like terrifying because I'm like, oh, I have to do it again. Wow. You know. Yes. <laughs> and yes. It went so well the first time, and I'm never gonna be the. You know, it didn't felt like oh, I can't duplicate that because that story's yeah, been brewing in me for 35 yes. years at that point. And, and yet, did apparently, it, did it again. you did it again. <laughs> yeah. um, going back to that first piece and the the courage that you brought to it thinking that nobody would hear it. Was the, did you have to deal with a lot of fallout from family members who maybe recognized their voices or other people in your life who recognized themselves in that piece? Yeah, there was, it was internal and it was interesting. I had it in the play, it's about growing up in the, in the situation I told my mom that I'd written the play and it's primarily about her and, and, and my brother and myself in this situation. Sure, yeah. And she, she was like, First she said, can I read it, which made me nervous. Because sure. I said, it's nothing to hide, you know, this whole thing. And I went, it's not biographical, because in the play, the mom's dead, and you're very much alive. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there wasn't fallout. I think there was more, it was very, uh, yeah, I think it was more 
pain about the honesty of what was happening. Because there was also humor in the play and stuff, sure. but I think there was more, I don't think it was fallout. Uh, and I think my brother appreciated it because he, uh, he got a lot of laughs, his character. Cur it, that was a lot of courage, because on so many levels. Yeah. Definitely. So, um, how long have you had the farm going? <laughs> three, about three, going, finishing our third year, just about to start. I know you're working on a project right now. In fact, you were doing that in New York <laughs> before you came and met us here. So, tell me about that project. We are, I'm in rehearsal, I'm directing a play called In the Event of My Death by Lindsay Joy, which is, we do a thing at the farm called the College Collaboration Project, where the farm commissions one playwright to write a play that will be produced and developed by three colleges throughout the school year. So the, we're looking for somebody who's writing something that young people, undergraduates, will be interested in working on, that'll have 30-year-old characters 30 and younger so they right, can achieve sure. it. And it's, it's a great project because the colleges get a new play, the students are involved in developing it, the first school does it, yeah. then the playwright rewrites during that process, rewrites during the second school, rewrites during the third, it culminates in a reading in New York, which we did a year ago, uh, with some members of each of the college and professional New York actors all together. And then I invited this company, Stable Cable, which is who's producing it in New York, it opens, uh, it starts the 6th of August and runs the month of August. Oh my goodness, well how wonderful and unfortunately we're, we're already out of time but say the name of the play one more time so it's we can look for it. In the Event of My Death. In the Event of My Death. Well, congratulations on, on everything and thanks so much for being here Patrick. We appreciate it. Um, and we thank again Greg Nani who is with us and we thank you for watching. I'm Marie Denoya Aronson and we will see you next time for The Spark. The Spark is produced at Riverview Studios, an award-winning digital video production facility, creating programs to help clients motivate, educate, and inform their audiences. Closed captioning provided by Ryan James Agency. Full service in digital advertising. Strategy and creative with gusto. Relentless about results. Find them at ryanjamesagency.com. Additional considerations provided by The Vault Authentic Wood Fire Pizzeria. Contact them at thevaultpizzeria.com. To contact The Spark, you can email us at thesparktelevision at gmail.com.